Father, we thank you this afternoon. We give you praise and we adore you because you remain our God forever and ever. Lord, at this moment, I pray that you will damage our ignorance and cause your light to shine and bring understanding to our souls. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that you speak to both the speaker and the hearers in the name of the Lord Jesus. At the end of this, let us have a full cause to glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I guess somebody is excited to be in God's presence this afternoon. If you are excited, can I hear you say Amen. Glory to God in the highest. I want to appreciate the leadership of the Godwin family, most especially our Aladura, uh, Bishop Olorun Femi Jide, our father, for this great privilege. And I also want to appreciate every um, category of leader in the Godwin family for this awesome privilege to share the word of God among God's people. Amen to Jesus. The topic before us this afternoon says, Your total health has been fully paid for. Your total health has been fully paid for. Now, what comes to mind when you hear the word health? Health. I will tell you that health is a very, very important aspect of destiny. Health remains one of the most important aspects of destiny fulfillment. Whatever you want to become in life, your health has to be on point. Your health has to be standard. Your health has to be preserved. Amen to Jesus. And that is why in the ministry of Jesus, you will discover that he is always healing the sick. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 30, the Bible says how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good, healing them that were oppressed of the devil. <laughs> Glory to God. Healing them that were oppressed of the devil. So one of the integral part or aspect of the ministry of Christ, the gospel, so to speak, is healing. And then what is to be healed? if there is no infringement or problem in the health of someone or some people are you getting what i'm saying now so health is an integral part of our destiny that shouldn't be taken with levity or seen with uh, disdain we shouldn't treat health with this, with disdain but then the truth of the matter is that this topic says our total health has been paid for by who by none other than the healer himself christ jesus amen to jesus all right before i go further can we please open our bibles to first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20 where we read our bible reading glory to god in the highest first corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 and 20 glory to god in the highest what know ye not that your body is the temple of the holy ghost which is in you which ye have of god and ye are not your own and verse 20 for ye are bought with a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's it simply means that at salvation at the point of salvation when where we accept christ as our personal lord and savior it means that we have entered into a new covenant of health and wholesomeness in our bodies because that is the that is the um, topic of today so we have to remain in that corner all right so when we accept christ as our personal lord and savior it means that we have entered into a new covenant of sound health or have you ever heard Jesus seek in the Bible or in any relative books? No. Jesus was never sick. He was never found sick. 
it means that when you now act, when we accept Jesus, because the Bible says we are heirs of the Father and joint heirs with the Son. The Son is Jesus, and the Father is Son Himself. The Son in the Father, the Father in the Son. If you understand the concept of Trinity, all right. So I don't want to go um, far away from the topic of the day. All right. So now Jesus is a healer, and then because Jesus does not get sick at salvation that we receive him we have entered into a covenant of wholesome health because at calvary jesus had paid for every goddamn thing in our life permit me to use that word all right at the calvary jesus had paid for everything that we need including our health including our health so the statement in the topic that says your total health has been paid for is both a statement of, um, what do I call it? It's both a statement of faith. Yes, it's a statement of faith that you don't need to worry about your health. You don't need to worry about the state of your health because your total health has been paid for by Christ. And then it is also a statement of reminder to remind you according to our bible reading that your body is now the temple of god because you have accepted christ as your lord and personal savior that your body has now become the temple of the spirit of god it has become the temple of god himself that god dwells in you god is no longer dwelling in the four corners of where we call sanctuary or where we call a church as a matter of fact a church in the end time revival setting in the gospel a church is meant to be a gathering of saints just as we always gather daily in the godwin family this is a church are you getting what i'm saying now this is a church and then when we gather in the name of jesus because the name of jesus is the authority of god the name of jesus is the sanctification of god the name of jesus is the power of god the name of jesus is the reason for our healing the name of jesus is what paid for our total health the name of jesus paid for our total health and just like i used to say that a church is not should not only be a teaching place a place of teaching the church should always also be a place of touching the church should not be I'm, I'm so happy with this topic why because this is one of the integral aspects of the ministry of jesus the gospel that we call the gospel so now a church should be not only a place of teaching but also a place of touching i decree in the name of jesus for as many that are under the sound of my voice in this short exhortation and you are under the torment of demons or devil in your health i speak to your life now in the name of jesus receive healing now receive healing in your body receive healing in your soul receive healing in your finance receive healing in your business receive healing in the name of jesus christ now let me go further we all know that sickness the opposite of health the opposite of good health sickness entered through sin amen to jesus it entered through sin but then when sickness entered through sin through sin jesus the second adam came and reconciled us back to god back to himself and then when we accepted him we entered into a covenant of sound health wholesome health like i said earlier amen to jesus can you open your bible to exodus the book of exodus chapter 15 verse 25 to 26 exodus chapter 15 verse 25 to 26 glory to god in the highest glory to god in the highest exodus 15 verse 25 to 26 amen and he cried unto the lord and the lord showed him a tree which when he had cast into the waters the waters were made sweet there he made for them a statute and an ordinance and there he proved them 
and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give he ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healed thee. Christ is the Lord that heals us. He heals us. And then there is a clause on that. He said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord your God. So one of the ways by which you maintain this, you know, this position of your total health fully paid for is to hearken to the voice of of God. You need to hack into the voice of God. If you want to maintain that position of total health, wholesome health, hack into the voice of God. Hack into the voice of God. Don't go. I have I have always told people that the Bible says, For there's a spirit in man, and then the breath of the Almighty give them all understanding. You know why? The difference between man and animal is the breath of life. Everything, every creation has a spirit. Every creation has a spirit that governs them, including man, including animals. But then, what differentiates man from all other creation, that, and that is why God made us, you know, dominate over every other thing he has created. And that thing is the breath of the living God. Now, I have always told people, why do we disobey the voice of God, for instance? Why don't we hack in diligently to the voice of God? It means, it, the reason is because the flesh, as it were, always protests against the things of the spirit. It is easy for you to sit before a TV and be there for many hours and not do anything other than watching one funny movie. But then the moment they tell you, let's pray, even if it is for five or ten minutes, your flesh will protest. Your flesh protests. Your flesh says no. The same thing happens to every areas of spirituality. Our flesh is very, very stubborn. Yes, the flesh is very, very stubborn. And that is why whoever is going to walk with God, whoever is going to move with God, whoever is going to enjoy God to the fullest, must first of all conquer flesh. You must conquer flesh. Sickness affects the flesh. There are different kinds of sickness. You can be sick in your body, you can be sick in your finance, you can be sick in any areas of your life. But then, this topic says, your total health has been fully paid for by Christ. Either you are sick in the body, either you are sick financially, either you are sick materially, either you are sick spiritually. The truth of the matter is that Christ has paid for your total health Fully, he has fully paid for it. So like I said earlier, our flesh always wants to protest spiritual things. And this place is simply saying, I won't put any of these diseases upon you if you hearken diligently to the voice of your maker. If you hearken to me, to my voice, I won't put any of these sicknesses that I put on the Egyptians. I won't put it on you. It is an aberration for a believer to undergo the same thing that is happening to people of the world. It is an aberration. It is an error under the sun. The reason why we fall into so many temptations, so many problems is because there is this inner voice because the Holy Spirit dwells in us, as that 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 has said, our body has become the temple of God, but then our flesh, we are giving our flesh momentum. We are giving our flesh preference more than the spirit. More than the spirit. We want to feed our flesh and starve our spirit. We want to satisfy our flesh and dissatisfy the spirit. We want to obey our flesh and disobey the spirit. It is not possible. It won't go well. I've always said it. I said, it's a wrong prayer to, to pray that, uh, uh, Lord, send 
every lot in my life, send them away. No, 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 no. It was Lot did not beg to follow Abraham. It was Abraham himself that disobeyed God. Lot was not an accursed man. Everything that happened to Lot later on in life was also as a result of disobedience. Stay here, Abraham told him. That is the voice of God. But by the time Abraham would return, Lot was already inside Sodom and Gomorrah. A place that God was angry with. He also did not hack into the voice of God. We get ourselves into trouble when we don't hack into the voice of the Lord. We, don't, we, we get ourselves into so many deep-rooted problems when we refuse to hack in to the voice of the Lord. Remember Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 to like verse 13 or 14. If thou diligently hack into the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that which he has commanded thee this day and then it, be, you know, it began to highlight the blessings that follows obedience. Disobedience will always bring sickness to us. What brought curse upon man in the garden of Eden, in the beginning of creation, was sin, disobedience. Don't let me call, don't let me even call it sin. Disobedience. God said, Do this. You said, No, this is what I'm going to do. Don't go this way. No, I will go that way. So many people entered into financial or business sickness because they failed to hack into the voice of God. You want to invest on something, and then there is this little still voice inside of you, the spirit of God. The witness of God inside of you telling you, don't do this, don't go this way. And then because you want to satisfy your flesh, because that business sounded, that business sounded so lucrative and juicy. And then you ignore the voice of God and then you went ahead. And at the, at the end of the day, the business went so bad and then you entered into problem. And then you become sick, hacking to the voice of God. 3 John chapter 1 verse 2, the Bible says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Good health is one of the will of God for our lives. That everything around us should be in total health, wholesome health. And then the topic is saying that Christ has paid for that fully, only for us to just tap into it and maintain it by hearkening to the voice of God from time to time. Amen to Jesus. Amen. To Another way to maintain or to tap into you know, that wholesome health, to tap into what Christ has done, according you know in our health is to live a holy life when i say holy life a lot of people would say mm, atibere. yes atibere. you know why i have always been telling people that let us put bible aside if before okay let's say before christianity entered into africa or nigeria for instance we were there was a particular way we were living our lives or let me say, even in the Old Testament, when Christ had not come, there was a particular way of life that people... Abraham lived and he became a friend of God, even without the Bible. Enoch did not see death. He didn't see death. The Bible said he, he walked with God to the point that he became a celestial being. That was when there was no Bible. There was no Bible then. There was no... Oh, uh, New Testament. There was no New Testament then. There was no preacher to tell people this is the way of the Lord. Even the prophets of the Old Testament, they were always on and off. The Spirit of God will possess them, will come upon them, and after they deliver the message, it leaves them again and they become ordinary. But now we are in a dispensation where the Spirit of God, God Himself, dwells in us. When Jesus was going, you know why? When he was going, he said, I won't leave you fatherless. I'm going to send you a comforter that will teach you all things. <laughs> and that is the Holy Spirit. So God himself is now dwelling in us. So after salvation, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift. You have it as you are listening to me. You have it. The problem with us is that we are not 
hearkening to the voice of the Lord that is inside of us. There is a spirit in man, the breath of the Almighty giveth them all understanding. May we have understanding in the name of Jesus. So you have to live a holy life. Live a holy life. Live a holy life. There is no two ways about it. You can't, you see, when we are talking about sickness, so many people have entered into series, so different kinds of sicknesses, and then you wonder how they got they, they came about it. You hear so many kinds of sicknesses in town now, you know, just like pure water. Sicknesses are now like pure water, and then medical practitioners will always find a name for it. Doctors will always find a name for it. They will always find a name for it. But I tell you, the root cause of all these things is sin or disobedience. You can't be a chain smoker, for instance. You can't be a smoker and not expect your liver to be damaged one day. You can't be an unrepentant drunkard, for instance, and not expect something to go wrong one day in your body system. Amen to Jesus. You can't expect to be sleeping around, for instance, you're sleeping around, it is dangerous to your health. Sleeping around is dangerous to your health. Your body is the temple of God. The same temple that God is dwelling, you are using it to sleep around. Sleeping around is dangerous to your health. Nobody is trying to condemn anybody here. Listen to me very well. This is no condemnation. This is no condemnation. This is no condemnation. Because you cannot be one with God and still be in the bondage of the devil when you are one with christ because you are joint heirs with the son as the bible has said you cannot be suffering what the son did not suffer you cannot be suffering from what christ did not suffer christ was never sick christ was the christ himself was you know he lived in absolute and total health so you cannot be one with him and then suffer sickness you cannot be one with him and not have a total, complete, wholesome health. Are you getting what I'm saying this afternoon? Amen to Jesus. So, as God, as government has principles and laws, the truth is, God Himself, Christ Himself, the you know, Christ Himself has principles that guides His own kingdom too. Every king has rules and regulations that guides His kingdom. Now that we belong to the kingdom of Christ, it is expected of us to abide by the rules and principles that is guiding the kingdom of Christ. And one of that principle, number one, is to hack into the voice of God. Number two, to live a holy life. Live a holy life. Don't live a holy life because you want to prove your, your point as a believer or as a Christian. No, that is eye service. Live a holy life because you want to glorify God in your bodies as, as that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 has said. Because you want to glorify God in your body. You are not trying to bully anybody and, make it, and wanting to make anybody uh, um, feel like you are, you are holier than them. No, you are not holier than anybody. Salvation is a gift. Faith is a gift. It's a gift. But then faith without works is dead. The Bible says it's dead. The works of faith, let me explain to you. The works of faith means that you need to do the things that will justify on your own part, that will justify and maintain your identity as a kingdom person, as a Christ kingdom person. For instance, you can't call yourself, you can't say you are a believer, and then people are not seeing the signs of being a believer in you. Your works, your attitude, your character, your journey has to define has to establish the fact that you are a believer in christ that you are now a kingdom person in one of my messages recently you know remember i said when you work in a company and they give you for, for instance you are a naval officer you are expected to always be in your uniform and when people see the uniform on you they know this is a naval officer as a matter of fact, when you are, you know, an army, or let me say, soldier, okay, an army, yes, an army, you are an army, and then you have your uniform on you, there is an attitude, there is a character that is expected of you as a military man. So, when you say you belong to the kingdom of Christ, 
you have to exhibit the character traits of a kingdom person. That is what we call the works of faith. And that's why the Bible says, faith without works. In the book of Hebrews, faith without works is dead. It means that if you say you are a believer or people call you a believer, it means everything that pertains to you must speak of that identity. Glory to God. Because you can be very religious and not and not be a faithful person. Yes, you can be very religious and not be a faithful person. Another thing that we need to consider is love. Is love. If you want to maintain that position of your total health being paid for by Christ, you need to walk in love. You need to you need to walk in love. There is no two ways about it. And when you are walking in love, one of the things that will happen is you forgive people easily. I have told you, unforgiveness is a poison that people drink and they expect the effect to be on other people. You can't be drinking poison and expect another person to be feeling the effect of your poison. That is unforgiveness for you. If you want to have total health, if you, if you want your total health to be sound, if you want your health to be good and sound, it means that you must walk in love. And when you walk in love, you will forgive easily. A lot of people are carrying burdens in their hearts today. They are carrying burdens in their hearts today like, I don't know. So many people are in, in depression. Today this one failed, tomorrow that one failed. Simply because their heart is full of unforgiveness and worry. Unforgiveness. If you only know what unforgiveness does to your soul, what it does to your body as well, you will run from unforgiveness. So walking in love is one of the ways you can preserve that position. You can maintain and sustain that position of your total health being paid for by Christ. Your body has become the temple of God. You should not allow malice. Some people will keep malice until they become sick. They become sick. They keep malice. They don't forgive easily. Some will even say, ah, Odi Batabadon, who told you you are you are going to heaven with that malice, without unforgiving, unforgiving spirit in your in your soul? It's not possible. You can't eat your cake and have it. If you have anybody in your heart right now that has hurt you, release them. Somebody asked me, said, How do I truly forgive people? I said, until you pray for the person that has hurt you, you have not truly forgiven the person. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Go and ask Joseph. Ask Joseph. His own blood brothers sold him into slavery. They even wanted to kill him. They threw him in, in a pit. They brought him out again and decided to sell him into slavery. Not knowing that they were helping him to fulfill destiny. But if it were to be another person, if it were to be somebody in our own generation now, all his brothers are dead when he became prime minister of Egypt. For the mere fact that they came to beg for food. Eh? Yeah? people are dead he would have incarcerated all of them imprisoned them or even ordered for their execution if it were to be somebody that didn't understand forgiveness and he told them he said hey you meant it for evil but God had turned it for good until you get to that level see when people hurt you eh the truth of the matter is, don't, don't allow yourself to die in any betrayal that has been done against you. Don't allow yourself to die in it. Make sure that you come through it. You can do anything through Christ that strengthens you. There is, God lives inside of you. God does not die. You should not die anyhow. You should not die. When people hurt you, when people betray you, when people snitch you, all you need to do is to hold on to your God and get through it. And by the time you get through it, forgive them. Let go and let God. You may not, you may not forget, but let go and let God. Pray for them. Be like Joseph. Be like Jesus himself, our perfect example. Jesus said, hey, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. Jesus could have called thunder and brimstone. He is God. 
he could have caught thunder and brimstone to fall upon those that were hurting him and beating him and inflicting all kinds of manners of injuries and wounds upon him. But he didn't do that. What did he do? He begged for forgiveness on them. He begged for forgiveness for them. Be like Jesus. Be like Joseph. Be like Jesus. Be like Joseph. Walk in love. Walk in love. I've seen people, I've read it in stories, and I've also seen people who will decide to poison somebody, who will decide to send ayah as a sin to somebody because the person hurt them, who will decide to kidnap somebody because the person hurt them. How, how did we get to this point? Pastor sending ayah as a sin to another pastor. Like, how did we get? Is it, is it, is it the same Christ that died for us? Abi Jesu o yigbo loku fa won kan ti Jesu mu se nku fa won mi Oh my god we need to we need to understand why we are here we need to understand our purpose as believers so make sure that you walk in love you walk in love you walk in love I have said it I said if our leaders in in Nigeria for instance are walking in love they know what they are supposed to do to make the country a better place. But they decided not to do it because they are not walking in love. They don't, if they, if they are, if they are walking in love, they know what to do. They know what to do. They know what to do. They know how to keep the country clean. Because one of the things that really gets people sick is a dirty envir environment, you know, bad environment, bad economy. And before you know it, people begin to think, people begin to brood. And before you know it, the health is, is draining. The health is coming down. The health is tearing apart. Anxiety, you know, catches up with people. And then the next thing, there is sickness. Sickness, sickness cre creeps in. Amen to Jesus. It shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. The next thing is for us to walk in faith. Faith. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. When you are walking in faith, it means you have a glorious hope. You have a glorious hope. You have a glorious hope. When you walk in faith, you have a glorious hope. And then, one of the things that kills faith, number one, is the social media. You are, you are wondering that I'm tilting towards that. Abby. The social media kills faith. If you have to stay away from some news portals, from some news agencies, please stay away from them. Some people have read news and the next thing is they developed high blood pressure. For instance, their son or daughter went to school and along the same route, it was reported that, hey, this, 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 this that has happened though. Maybe accident that killed so many people had happened on that same route. And then they read it in news. They came across the news and read it. And the next thing, they developed IBP. Only for them to see their daughter or son come back home safely. And that one tells them that he's not even aware that something happened. But they had read it in the news. I remember when I was in school, you know, a lecturer said, bad news is what is regarded as news bad news makes headlines stay away if you want to feed your faith faith comes by hearing if you want to feed your faith stay away from some funny news agencies stay if you need to stay away from social media from internet for for a while please do it don't get yourself you know don't get yourself tied down stricken by high blood pressure Amen to Jesus. So, you need to walk in faith. Walk in faith. Walk in faith. Don't be jealous of anyone. Be contented with what you have. Your total health has been paid for by Christ. Don't tear it down. Don't bring it down. Don't become, don't become a debtor again. Don't put yourself in the position of a debtor again. Health-wise. Health-wise. Allow whatever God has given to you to be enough for you. And if you need more, pray for it. God will give you. 
in the name of Jesus. Don't be jealous of anybody. Don't envy anybody. Don't compare yourself with anybody. These are reasons why people enter into sickness. These are reasons why people enter into sickness. Don't, say, don't be jealous of anybody. Don't be jealous. Alright? Amen to Jesus. And finally, let me say this. Another, the final way I think you can maintain the position of a total health being paid for by Christ is to live healthy. Live healthy. Live healthy. Live healthy. Don't eat nonsense. And don't allow people to give you nonsense to eat. Don't eat nonsense. Don't eat nonsense. Take care of yourself. Go for, med for medical checkups from time to time. Don't become a debtor again because Christ has fully paid for your total health. Don't become a debtor again. He has written of that debt. The book of Isaiah chapter 53 Verse 4 and 5 said, He was bruised and wounded for our transgressions, for our iniquities. He said, The chastisement of our peace is upon him. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. Everything sickness that we ought to go through in life has been hung on the cross of Calvary. Don't go back there and pick it up with your attitude and character. Don't go back there and pick it up with your behavior. Live healthy. Eat healthy. Speak healthy. Walk healthy. Avoid dirtiness. I don't want to go into... If I, if I want to go into details on this living healthy, that is enough topic on its own. But God will help us in the name of Jesus. Are we blessed already? Are we blessed already? There is something I want us to read before we go, before we end it. Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 matthew 22 chapter 37 to 40 matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 40 glory to jesus matthew 22 chapter 37 to 40 glory to jesus in the highest glory to jesus in the high matthew chapter 22 verse 37 to 40 i'm going to read Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Can you hear that? And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen to Jesus. Amen to Jesus. So I want to leave you with this, to maintain, above all, to maintain your total health that has been paid for by Christ. Make sure you love God. Love God and love people genuinely. Don't fake anything. Love God. And love will make you healthy. When you are not chasing after anybody, you are not, you are not harboring anything inside for anybody. You are free, you smile, you, you, you do things right. It will preserve your total health. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this great uh, and wonderful time in your presence once again. We give you praise because you remain our God as always. We bless your name. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for anyone that is going through any form of sickness be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Okay, can, can, can we quickly pray like these two or three prayer points? I want you to tell God, every sign of sickness in my body, in the name of Jesus, I command you, leave my body right now. Live my life in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare, in the mighty name of Jesus, <laughs> in the name of Jesus, every sign of sickness in my body, live now in the name of Jesus. Because my total health has been paid for by Christ, I command every sign of sickness to leave my body now in the name of Jesus. Leave my body now in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
leave my body in jesus mighty name we are prayed you are going to tell god in the name of jesus every arrow of sickness dwelling in my system i command you be uprooted by fire now in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray father in the name of jesus i declare and i declare every arrow of sickness dwelling in my system dwelling dwelling in my life i command because the to my total health has been paid for by christ my body is the temple of god in the name of jesus arrow of sickness get out of my body get out of my system get out of my system get out of my life in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we pray finally you are going to tell god in the name of jesus lord let your hand of total healing be upon me let your total let your hand of total healing rest upon my life in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray father in the name of jesus i decree and i declare in the name of jesus let your total healing let your hand of total healing be upon me now in the name of jesus let your hand of total healing be upon me let your hand of total healing be upon me right now in the name of jesus in jesus mighty name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you mightily. I celebrate you all. Thank you for this privilege. I appreciate you once again. The Lord bless you, Pastor Prince, at the